Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on stroke. The definition of stroke is a sudden onset of focal central nervous system deficits which lasts more than 24 hours or leading to death with no apparent cause other than the vascular origin. So more than 24 hours is important. If less than that, we should consider transient ischemic attack. The causes of stroke are thrombosis, for example, small vessel occlusion or thrombosis in situ, cardiac emboli due to atrial fibrillation, infective endocarditis or myocardial infarction, which are some of the cardiac causes of stroke, arterial thromboembolism, for example, from the carotid arteries, CNS bleeds, especially in patients who have hypertension, history of trauma to the head, aneurysm rupture, or they are on anticoagulatory drugs, or thrombolysis, which could have caused intracranial bleeding, causing hemorrhagic stroke. The signs of stroke. The signs that suggest bleeding in stroke, because there are two types of stroke, which are the hemorrhagic stroke and ischemic stroke. So pointers towards bleeding are signs like meningism, for example, neck stiffness, headache, photophobia. These are some of the signs. A severe headache, for example, in subarenoid hemorrhage, there is the thunderclap headache, and even coma. Whereas pointers to ischemic stroke are carotid bleed on physical examination, we hear a bleed in the carotid arteries, atrial fibrillation, which could have caused cardiac emboli, causing ischemic stroke in the brain, past history of transient ischemic attack, or ischemic heart disease. These are some of the signs or risk factors to suggest ischemia. Whereas the signs based on the site of infarction in the brain can be infarct in the cerebrum, brainstem or lacuna infarct. So there are different signs for each site of infarct. For cerebral infarct, depending on the site of the cerebrum affected, there may be contralateral sensory loss or hemiplegia. Where this hemiplegia it is initially flaccid, where the patient will have floppy limbs and fall like a dead wag when we lift the arms or limbs. And later on, it progress to become spastic, which is a typical finding in upper motor neuron lesion. Other signs for cerebral infarct include dysphagia, homonymous hemianopia, and visual spatial deficit. Whereas if the infarct is in the brainstem, the signs are varying, in which includes quadriplegia, disturbance of the gaze and vision, and also lock-in syndrome, where the patient is aware of the surroundings, but they are unable to respond. Lacuna infarcts, where it uh, consists 25% of the cases of stroke, includes infarct in the basal ganglia, internal capsule, thalamus, and pons of the brain. So there are five syndromes, five typical syndromes, which include the ataxic hemiparesis, pure motor, pure sensory, sensory motor, or dysatria. The cognition and consciousness are usually intact unless it is stroke in the thalamus, then it might be impaired. So this is important. We can look at the signs to uh, see where is the site of infarction. For investigation, when the patient present in the AD, uh, A&E department, we can do CT scan of the brain to rule out hemorrhagic stroke. This is important because we different management for hemorrhagic stroke and ischemic stroke. We can also do ECG to check the heart, look for any atrial fibrillation, signs of myocardial infarction like ST elevation or even depression, PUF inversion and so on, and also signs of left ventricular hypertrophy. For echocardiogram, we can also rule out heart as the thrombolytic source, where there could have been a cardiac emboli passing through the bloodstream to the brain and occlusion of the cerebral arteries causing shock. This is more towards finding out the cause of the shock. For We can also do blood tests like full blood count, check for the hemoglobin and platelet level, because hyperviscosity can cause shock. Coagulation profile, before starting any anticoagulation, Fasting blood sugar and fasting lipid profile to look for the risk factors of stroke, 
because diabetes mellitus and hypercholesterolemia are the risk factors. Carotid Doppler ultrasound to look for to assess the carotid arteries, whether it could have been a thromboembolism from the arteries, carotid arteries, and the abuse, also known as renal profile, check as a baseline before starting any drug. For management, for acute management, we have to protect the airway to avoid hypoxia or aspiration. Maintain the homeostasis, which includes the blood glucose, keep between 4 to 11 millimol per liter, and also blood pressure, maintain the blood pressure. We should also screen for swallowing, whether the patient can swallow or not, and until this is done, we have to keep the patient new by mouth, but remember to keep them hydrated. We, um, for the investigation, the CT brain is important to exclude hemorrhagic stroke. So after excluding hemorrhagic stroke, and we see that it is an ischemic stroke, we can then give antiplatelet agents, for example, aspirin. This antiplatelet is continued for two weeks, and then later on switch to long-term antithrombotic treatment. So after excluding hemorrhagic stroke, we can also give thrombolysis, thrombolytic therapy. If the onset of symptoms was less than four hours and a half, four hours and 30 minutes ago. Then we can consider thrombolysis, where we give out the place. However, there are some contraindications for this thrombolysis as well, which I will talk more about it later on. So we have to ask carefully in the history to look for any contraindications where we cannot give thrombolytic therapy. And other than this management, we can give intra-arterial mechanical thrombectomy. It is more beneficial for those with large artery occlusion in the proximal anterior circulation. And after this management, acute management, we can admit the patient to an acute stroke unit where there will be multidisciplinary care to improve the outcome of the patient. So let's look at the contraindications for thrombolytic therapy. These are some of the contraindications where if on the CT brain we see that the infarct or hemorrhage is too large, or there is only mild or non-disabling deficit, recent surgery, trauma, artery or vein puncture at an uncompressible site, any previous intracranial bleeding, any arterial venous malformation or aneurysm that could increase the risk of bleeding, severe liver disease that could have caused coagulopathy, seizures at presentation, stroke or serious head injury in the past 3 months, GI or urinary tract hemorrhage in the past 21 days, and any history of intracranial neoplasm, where there is any history of brain tumor. So these are some of the contraindications for thrombolysis. We have to remember to ask a detailed history when clocking the patient. Because if there have these uh, contraindications, then we cannot give thrombolytic therapy because there will be an increased risk of intracranial bleed. So this is all for this video. Thank you.